to another week in my life vlog. We're starting it off on this rainy, cozy Monday. 11.30 right now, um, and I've just kind of had my morning routine and caught up on my emails and done some like Monday morning planning the week. Now, I'm making some food because my building is shutting off our water from 12 to four for some maintenance reason, I'm not sure. And I'm making food now, I would usually eat at like 12.30 or one, but I wanna be able to wash my dishes, so. I might go to a coffee shop or something just to, I don't know, get out. It is raining, but I'll probably just go somewhere nearby. Um, I need to get caught up on some content that I need to submit. And I also have something else I need to prep for. Okay, I got my content film that I needed to, so I can put some makeup on. Um, and I'm going to now head to a coffee shop for the afternoon. I, like I said, have some things I wanna get done. Um, I still need to edit something else for a video. And I have an interview this week, so I'm trying to get ahead on prepping for that. And then also the foreign service officer, like application package and testing registration closes next week. So that's kind of where my priorities are this week. I feel like I'm at a good stopping point to pack up my laptop and head out. And I already put makeup on my face, so I might as well leave the house. <laughs> that's my thought process. Oh, okay, wait, let me check this email really quick. I feel as though it's cool enough outside to justify wearing a sweatshirt, especially because I'm not actually going that far. I mean, it's 68 degrees. That's cold enough. Let's go. rainbow is it was raining all day and now it's clearing up a little bit and there's a giant rainbow over Brooklyn okay dirty window <laughs> open up the dirty window oh well, that doesn't really help much but wow and the plane flying under it now okay well morning it is first thing in the morning and I just washed my face and I wanted to share with you guys a new product that I'm trying that was gifted to me from Paula's Choice I've been using vitamin C for a bit now but this one has 25% vitamin C and it's with glutathione and, and GAP technology that makes it hydrating helps with oxidization I've definitely tried other vitamin C's and for some reason a lot of them feel very harsh on the skin, even diluted, but this one, I think because of the formulation, if you have trouble with vitamin C, this goes on so smooth, it doesn't do the like crazy tingle heat sensation. Just doing a couple pumps of this evenly. This is also, I mean, vitamin C in general, if you don't know, is really good for discoloration, even an ounce of skin, brightening the skin. I'm also gonna bring it down my neck. And you have trouble finding ones that your skin agrees with check it out well, i think i vlogged a clip this morning and then after that i pretty much spent the entire morning editing a vlog that i needed to get approved so i set that off it took longer than i wanted it to but it is done now so that's good and then i just had some lunch and now it's early afternoon and i'm at my desk focusing on interview prep dressed for a workout later i have a soul cycle class and I'm excited to go to this instructor that I haven't been to since DC. So my friend and I, who I used to go with in DC, are going together, which will be fun. That's at 6.30 in Nomad. So I'm kind of thinking I might work for the next hour here. I just don't want to spend all afternoon sitting in like a hotel lobby in Nomad. Um, so I'll spend like the first half of the afternoon here and then head up to work from probably like the Ace Hotel because it's a good Nomad working spot and then from there go to SoulCycle. So that's the afternoon, pretty chill. It's sunny and nice today, which is beautiful. The high is 73 or 74, so I'm wearing this little lightweight Halara athletic jacket. It's a beautiful day to be alive. I'm kind of having a hard time focusing. I think it's just my natural inclination of I have a few days to do this, so 
I like naturally just procrastinate, but I'm really trying not to do that. I'm gonna set a timer, I think, put on some like jazz music and just focus for the next hour on this before I move locales. <laughs> I do wanna get outside a little bit, so I'll probably walk and take a little break while I'm going from point A to point B, and then we'll go from there. Okay, that was a productive hour. It was actually more like an hour and a half because I ended up watching a webinar. <laughs> but now it's three o'clock. I'm headed into Manhattan. Got sports bra under this. I'm not gonna spin in this top because it's like long sleeve, but good cover. And let's go have a couple more productive hours before Soul Cycle. dark in there that I'm like adjusting back to the daylight but I'm headed to Soul Cycle and hopefully I have enough energy for this class. <laughs> I got a lot done yesterday. I was actually pretty proud of myself when I went to the Ace Hotel lobby and got some more stuff done. I was partially falling asleep because it's so dark in there. Um, but I actually like filled out a lot of the outline of the interview prep that I wanted to. Now today I'm gonna go in and do some of the questions that I think they'll ask me and prepare some examples and stuff. I'm going to meet my friend at Coffee Project in Chelsea. I've been to the Brooklyn one many a time. I've never been to any of their other locations. My friend lives in Manhattan, so we're gonna check it out. And she has a lot to get done, and so do I, so hopefully we can motivate each other. I also just got this book in the mail last night. I filmed a clip that I was reading it this morning, and you guys, I've been looking forward to this for so long. This is an author who I found on TikTok probably a year ago, or maybe even more. Her name's Dallas Taylor, and she finally just released her book. She's been kind of working on it for a while. It's called I Belong Deeply to Myself. We've followed each other now on TikTok for a bit, so we're like mutuals, but I'm just, I love her writing and I've been looking forward to it since she's released little clips of it. So definitely check it out. I read just one of the essays this morning and it was really good. It was about different emotions and I'll have it linked on my Amazon down below. Uh, because that's where she's selling it. But yay, congrats, Dallas. Everyone should pick this up. Okay, it's one o'clock now and I'm hungry, so I'm going to seek out lunch at a little sushi spot next block. wanted to take a walk and also I just feel like with my vlogs recently especially this one I feel like there's so much that I don't want to vlog and things behind the scenes that they're kind of just like falling flat so I want to do a little bit more intentional thematic content where I'm not just sitting in my apartment talking hopefully the microphone is like working well I have this mini mic from specifically when Sierra and I went to Concord, New Hampshire last year and we recorded a podcast episode there but we didn't want to pack our big microphones so I bought these little mini mics and I have not used them since so I thought this would be a perfect opportunity because that's the issue with being outside in the world near the traffic in the wind is the sound mostly so hopefully this remedies that but I wanted to take you guys on my little morning walk through the neighborhoods, the brownstones, really feeling that we are in Brooklyn because we are, and talk a little bit about living alone in New York, my experience, the pros and cons. I have so many disclaimers for this, but I'll try and keep it brief and like <laughs> trust that you guys will, you know, give me the benefit of the doubt in terms of obviously it's huge financial and personal decision and I'm not trying to say that like oh yeah it's just easy and everyone can afford it and all this stuff okay we're switching to the front camera just for some variety but I want to take you guys on my walk to just like 
be in the neighborhood a little bit while we're talking about it. I, quick backstory, moved to New York 2019 summer. I literally got an Airbnb in this neighborhood actually and set up like six or seven apartment tours. I knew that I wanted to live alone. I'd been living with a roommate before that and I just know myself and I think also for someone who does social media, living alone is an advantageous thing because then you can record, make content, you know, make noise, whatever it is, without having to worry about someone else. I don't know, with proper communication, you can make any, not any, but a lot of like roommate situations work. It's just good to know yourself and what kind of environment you work best in. I am an extrovert, but I'm also very introverted in the sense of like, I love to have alone time, I love to recharge. Coming into a super busy city, where I knew at the time, especially, that I would be like working and going into an office every day and being out and about and there was so much to do. And I just knew that New York was an overwhelming place. And so knowing myself, I thought it would be ideal to be able to come home, live alone. And that's my space to be alone and like recharge. And I wouldn't miss that roommate dynamic because I'd be so you know, like socially pulled in a million directions anyway because there's just so much to do in the city um, that living alone would be the place to kind of do that. And that first six months before COVID, it truly was. Like I look back at some of my vlogs from when I was first here and I was very rarely home. Like I was going to work first thing in the morning and then afterwards I'd go to workout class, meet a friend for drinks, go to dinner, come home at like, 9 p.m. and just shower, sleep, bed. And I think for that reason, living alone was so ideal at the time. But obviously everything changed in COVID when that caught up and suddenly I was only home, you know? And when I was in New York um, in 2020, that's when it became super isolating. And that's when it's like, I mean, obviously we didn't foresee that and I, probably would have chosen differently if I knew that COVID was in the cards. But I think in that situation and then adapting to working from home after that, that's when it can become very isolating when you don't have that schedule that's getting you out of the house, when you don't have work to go to or responsibilities elsewhere, where you're just working from home at your desk. That's when I feel like living alone can be isolating and it takes intentional practice and intentional planning with friends to not fall into that. So when suddenly you're living alone, you have a studio where your bedroom is also, your office is also, your living room is also your dining room, that kind of thing. That's when I feel like it gets tricky because you start to go a little bit crazy. Again, everyone's different though. Like some people might completely thrive in that environment. I'm someone who loves being alone. I never had that feeling that easily of like feeling isolated and really like needing social interaction before COVID, which I think a lot of people can relate to. So again, I'm trying to speak out of terms of the COVID situation because I know that was a unique circumstance. If you are working a remote job and you have a small space and you know yourself and you know that you need social interaction, I feel like living alone is good to the extent that you put in effort to satisfy those other needs intentionally outside of your work time or whatever it is. I mean, you guys see it in my vlogs. Like I always seek out different workspaces, even if I'm doing something remote, to go to a coffee shop, explore a new place, be around people, even if you're not directly engaging with them, just to feel a part of society. You're not always having that like tether of a roommate or a partner, or whatever it is, that reminds you that at home. So cute. So I think in that instance, I did miss having the roommate situation and living with someone else because when it's like suddenly that's what your like your whole life is in your apartment and your work environment is there I think that's when it gets hard but then again there's also the flip side of like okay but there's the frustrations of sharing a workspace with someone else and like having to manage calls and noise and be cognizant of each other's you know focus time and all of that totally understood but I think it's just kind of I could get myself getting stung by a bee on camera right now. If you're looking into, again, this is mostly geared towards people who are looking into moving to living alone in New York or a city or 
whatever. I think these are just things to consider and just know yourself, your own situation and plan accordingly and make efforts accordingly because it is easy to just be at home all day working and then work out and then make dinner and go to sleep and the whole day just not have any face-to-face interactions. So I think it's important to try and if you need that, plan that into your day. Plan times to go meet at a coffee shop with your other remote working friends. Oh wow, now we're at a fire station. Truly, never a dull moment. And there's always construction everywhere. This is why I don't film outside usually. This is cute. And now we're entering Fort Greene Park. Lovely day for a walk in the park. I think I might find like a picnic table or something to sit at and wrap up this little discussion session. Me discussing with myself with no live feedback. But yeah, again, I'm trying not to be super redundant and obvious because I think everyone would say, you know, there's obviously pros of living with someone else, splitting certain costs, bills. Okay, so yeah, obvious things aside, I just think the most important thing to think about or consider when you're looking into living alone, mostly in a big city is what I'm talking about, because that's my experience. Again, everything I'm saying is just my own experience, not trying to overload the disclaimers. I'm going to sit at this nice little picnic table. Also, in terms of dating, I would say living alone is a big plus because having roommates is very common in the city. So if you're dating someone, like I've dated people in the past who had roommates. And so I guess it's a pro and a con because if you want to be at your place and like be the one in control of the environment, it's great because then it's kind of like you always have a place where you're not disturbing anyone else and it's just the two of you and whatever. But again, you can make any situation work. This is just my experience of living alone. I hope this like came off properly. I'm really not trying to make it seem like braggy or like oh i'm so glad that i can live alone i can never live with other people because that's really not the case i think it might be more challenging being used to living alone and then readapting to living with someone else i know friends of mine who've moved in with partners after living alone or even living with roommates like it's a big adjustment and other things to consider too also something that came up for me that i didn't really think about before when i was i mean i'd been living alone for a while at this point it was more of kind of like a relationship and also friendship and quality time balance. I'm such a quality time person. I always want to try and make an effort and make plans with people and do things in the evenings and get dinner with friends, whatever that I can during the week and otherwise, just because I do live alone. Like I make social plans here and there, but a lot of my time is in solitude. And so in other people's free time too, like after work hours, I really try and like make plans with people or whatever. So when I was first dating my previous boyfriend, I had this issue come up that I didn't really think about where I was spending a lot of time with him. Like it was a new relationship, honeymoon phase, blah, blah, blah. Um, and we spent a lot of time together, I will say. And one of my friends, it's like, it takes intentional planning also to keep up with long distance friends if you prioritize seeing people in person. So for me, at one point, like my friends and I had been trying to plan a FaceTime that we could all make it to and do this. And I was like, oh, sorry, I have plans then. Or like I would prioritize going to see my boyfriend or my friends in the evenings because I'd been alone at home working all day. And so prioritizing that quality in-person time was important to me that I didn't realize that I was like unintentionally just brushing off chances to connect with long distance friends. And one of my friends brought that up to me and she's like, I just feel like it's been really hard to like during covid we had very planned out we were always facetiming watching shows together and felt like very connected even though we weren't close together um but then after that when things picked back up again and people were going out and my friend was like i feel super distant from you even though we do live far apart um i just feel like you haven't been making an effort to prioritize like this time to connect with us who are far away and you know that hurts my feelings and I just stopped and thought about it and I was like wow you're so right I didn't even realize I was doing it because you know you I was talking to my friend you live with your partner like you always have someone around meanwhile I live alone and so when I do have free time I am prioritizing in-person plans because that feels like more quality time to me and so I came to this understanding where I was like oh I didn't realize that I was like doing that I apologize and I wanted to be more intentional about like also prioritizing those FaceTimes and remote things and connecting with friends who I was far from because it is easy. I mean, especially when it's like time zone differences and whatever, you're both working during the day. And it's just important to prioritize both and make an effort to, you know, have those 
long distance catch-ups too so i don't know maybe that's just a me thing um and also with that relationship when i was dating him he worked in person all day every day and i worked from home alone and so we had this issue not issue but we just had to find the balance of like by the time the workday was done and i was so i like wanted to expend social energy and go out and be in the world because i'd been at home working meanwhile he had been interacting with people and being out in the world working all day so when he you know logged off of work he wanted to be at home relaxing just like having a chill dinner watching a movie that kind of time together and meanwhile i wanted to be like going out and doing things and going to trivia and like seeing friends and all this and so we had to kind of find that balance of a compromise of where both of our energies kind of met that's also an introvert extrovert thing we are both extroverts but still it's like you know you need a little bit of both and these are just things that came up that i realized were happening because i lived alone that i didn't foresee and then you just have to like be intentional and aware of those things and i think again awareness and knowing yourself and your friendships and prioritizing accordingly is key here um, but those are just some things that came up that i didn't really think about before i was living alone um, again i don't think that's any reason to or not to if you're thinking about it but just like be being aware of them really helps anyway i feel like i've blabbered on enough let me know if you have anything to add or other questions or anything like that. Also, let me know what you thought of this little segment of the vlog, walking around Port Green with my little mini mic and talking to myself about a topic <laughs> and what else you'd wanna see me talk about in the future. Okay, I had fun. Thanks for coming with me. What is included in those projects that's, you know, based on what we know uh, works in terms of, you know, ensuring that there's participation in the structures and the opportunities that sort of exist within a community or a society. I'm wondering how disgusting this process would be. It's Thursday afternoon, so I'm going to get my two for one full drink at Starbucks because I can't pass up free things. Okay, you guys it is late now it's like five minutes till midnight isn't that a song i need to go to sleep i've just been like caught up i always do this where like last minute i'm trying to suddenly i'm like oh i should know like a million more things and like cram research and all this stuff but um i don't know i feel pretty good about this i've done like a lot of background research on topics that will be relevant to the role and yeah, so I'm gonna wake up early tomorrow and have time to do some like last minute prep and practicing um, like elevator pitch and everything before the interview, but it's not till 11. So I have most of the morning for that, but I do need to sleep. So good night. I really didn't do much besides I went to the gym, got a workout in. It's a nice like break in my day. Um, and I'm already sore, I think. And then I came back, made dinner, watched an episode of Game of Thrones, and just came back to this. So now I'm gonna read, try and read some like fiction, get my mind elsewhere, and then we'll wake up and hopefully have a good interview tomorrow. Let us pray. my interview so I've been doing some last minute prep all morning as I normally do I'm just wearing my Dwayne the Rock Johnson black mock neck um, very simple and 
yeah, I'm feeling good, honestly. I feel very prepared, but part of me like either thinks that it's going to be very easy or a lot harder than I expect. So I don't know. And it's only 30 minutes long, so that's why I'm like, maybe it's less technical and just more get to know my background, but we will see. Knock on wood. Okay, I'm gonna turn off the camera and I'll see you on the other side. Eventually. That went so well, you guys. I, closing laptop dramatically. Um, I feel really good about that. There was a few times where I could feel myself like losing my train of thought momentarily, but I think I brought it back and it was okay. Um, but yeah, they were so nice and I was prepared for all their questions. Nothing caught me off guard and it seems like it would be a really great fit, but who knows? Feeling really positive about that, but I felt positive before and been let down so okay so that has been really the focus of my week now that that is over i have the rest of my day i do need to catch up on other work i've been neglecting and some content that i need to focus on so i'm gonna spend my afternoon doing that i might go somewhere because i'm already ready but i'm gonna eat something here really quick first and then we'll see where the rest of the day takes us but yay i'm really happy with how that went that's all for now <laughs> after next but I have to submit these by the end of next week.